Do you recognize this man? Well, he's an important chemist who found different ways to make medicines cheaper, such as cortisone, steroids, and birth control pills. He did this by using an extract from soybeans, as opposed to more expensive methods, to make the ingredients more common. His name is Percy Julian. Although they continued to face discrimination in employment, as well as some segregation, northern black men faced fewer barriers to voting than southern black men, such as Percy Julian. As their population increased, their vote became essential to win an election. The U.S. Supreme Court case, Plessy v. Ferguson, in 1896, made segregation legal. It validated the separate but equal ideal shared by many Southerners by saying that it fulfilled the requirements of the 14th Amendment. In reality, the facilities designated to black people were far worse than those given to white people. Percy Julian's parents lived in and Julian was born into this environment. Percy LeVon Julian was born April 11, 1899 in Montgomery, Alabama. He was the grandson of former slaves. As slaves, they were faced with daily brutality and oppression. Julian's grandmother had two of her fingers cut off for trying to teach herself to read. He only attended school through the 8th grade because there were no high schools open to black students. The Freedmen's Bureau set up schools for African-American children. Their parents often went with their children so they could also be educated. With African-Americans removed from state legislatures, the white majority then began to add restrictions, such as segregated schools, hotels, restaurants, and train cars. Julian went to a segregated elementary school that didn't teach any science. Because there were no high schools, he went to the Alabama State Normal School. There, he learned practical skills like blacksmithing and hat making, and they also trained teachers for black schools. Because he wasn't taught about science at school, Julian had to read about science at his father's library. He became interested in chemistry and decided he wanted to be a chemist. Julian's father, however, wanted him to be a doctor. Back then, due to segregation, there was a need for black doctors who would treat black patients. The only jobs in chemistry were in white-owned factories and laboratories. Julian's father warned him about how hard it would be for him to find a job as a chemist, but Percy was determined to be a chemist. Julian quickly found that the discrimination he knew in the South also existed elsewhere. Unable to find a place to live in college, he found an attic room at the nearby Sigma Chi fraternity and had to work as a waiter to pay the rent. A chemistry professor at DePauw, William Blanchard, mentored Julian, and Julian turned out to be an excellent student. When Julian graduated in 1920 with a chemistry degree, he had the highest grades in his class and was a member of the Honor Society at his college. But in spite of his success, DePauw refused to make him a full professor because of his race, as white students would not be taught by a black teacher. Julian applied for jobs at prominent chemical companies, but was repeatedly rejected when hiring managers discovered that he was black. Julian almost got hired at the Institute of Paper Chemistry in Appleton, Wisconsin, but the town had a law that said African Americans could not spend the night in Appleton, let alone live and work there. In 1916, less than 5% of all Americans graduated from college. The rate was even lower for African Americans. At DePauw University, Percy Julian and Joseph Pickle worked together on chemicals found in plants. They were interested in a chemical called physostamine, which was able to treat glaucoma. Julian was able to synthesize it and make it easily produced. Even after Percy Julian became famous for synthesizing phosphodiene, DePaul University still wouldn't let him rise above the job of temporary researcher. Julian also found dozens of other uses for soy oil and protein, including coatings for paper and latex paints, oils for salad dressings, and glues and plastics. Julian would go on to get numerous patents for soybean products, and he helped make soybeans an important crop in America. Percy Julian also synthesized cortisone to make it cheaper. The cortisone that had cost $700 per gram could now be made for about 50 cents per gram. Just as Julian made physostamine affordable for glaucoma patients, he now made cortisone affordable for arthritis patients. After he sold his company, Julian Laboratories, in 1961, he became one of the first black millionaires before founding the Julian Research Institute, a nonprofit organization that he ran for the rest of his life. Despite his success, Julian still had to face bitter racism. The Julians were the first African-American family to move into Oak Park, a neighborhood in Chicago. Not long after they arrived, their house was firebombed. A second attack occurred the following year. Fortunately, no one was hurt in either incident, and many of Julian's white neighbors stood by him and his family. Julian was the first black chemist elected to the National Academy of the Sciences in 1973. Like many other African-Americans at that time, Julian had to pursue his goals away from the United States because of its racial biases. He traveled to Vienna for education. Here, he finished his graduate work in organic chemistry in the fall of 1931. 
This made him the third African American in history to earn a PhD in chemistry. His accomplishments did not go unnoticed. In 1946, Reader's Digest ran his life story under the title, The Man Who Wouldn't Give. Also, in 1947, the NAACP awarded him with the Spingarn Medal for his discoveries that saved many lives. Also, in 1950, the Chicago Chamber of Commerce named him the Chicagoan of the Year. This also happened to be the same year that he and his family moved to Oak Park. Julian also worked with civil rights groups and was seen as an elder statesman, even though he didn't always agree with its most prominent leader, Martin Luther King Jr. Like many older African Americans at the time, Julian thought younger people like King were trying to achieve too much, too fast. He was also opposed to the militant ideas of those like Malcolm X and his followers. Percy Julian died in 1975 of liver cancer. During his life, he made many scientific discoveries that affect the lives of millions to this day. In order to do this, he had to overcome many obstacles, the most prominent being racism. He lived the American dream whilst helping many people and overcoming extreme hardships.